Good, happy Monday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Governor Sununu writes to President on behalf of Indonesian immigrants. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. Imagine a great education with over career relevant programs and a full campus life to engage, inspire, and prepare you to better yourself and your world. Envision the future you really want at NHTI. Visit our open house October 25th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. In a letter to the president, Governor Chris Sununu makes an appeal on behalf of 69 individuals who, after nearly two decades of living in this country, now face possible deportation. They follow the right steps. So, you know, when people follow the right steps, when they're following that legal pathway, that's where we have to make it easy for folks. The group of Christians fled religious persecution and violence in their home country of Indonesia, entered the U.S. legally on tourist visas, and filed applications for asylum. Advocates say if these people were sent back to Indonesia, they could face much more dangerous situations than what they were originally running from. So they have very legitimate fears of return. Since 2010, Immigration and Customs Enforcement had ongoing orders of supervision with the group that extended their stays, allowing them to live, work, and raise families in New Hampshire as long as they checked in regularly and stayed out of trouble. Friday, an ICE official from New Hampshire testified that this spring, the Secretary of Homeland Security directed them to remove all undocumented immigrants, not just those involved in criminal activity. The governor's letter urges the administration to take steps to secure the border, stop illegal immigration, and make the process for legal immigration easier to navigate. Speaking on behalf of his constituents, speaking to an administration from his own political party, that's just really a a strong element of of a multi-part strategy to make the case that that these dear people deserve to stay here for those who want to do it illegally that's where we need to create you know a, a system that can hold folks accountable in dover siobhan lopez wmur news nine okay and there you go on that report Day a seven-year-old boy dead after being attacked by two pit bulls. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB Boston. is raffling off this beautiful home in Drakeit, Massachusetts. Raffle tickets are just $100 each. From our house to your house, visit themeganhouse.org to purchase a raffle ticket today. A simple vase of flowers stands in the spot where seven-year-old boy lost his life. According to the district attorney, for unknown reasons, the child got into a fenced in area around his neighbor's Clare Street home in Lowell Saturday night. We were sprinting down the street. We saw everybody around that gate over there and screaming and there's two dogs just dragging this kid around. He was he was already uh, he was already gone. Neighbors helpless looked on in horror as they watched two pit bulls attack the young boy. Just watching it happen. Nothing anyone could do. The owner of the dog tried to fight with the dog to let him go. Just hours before the attack, the boy was seen playing with other neighborhood children. And residents here say he enjoyed animals, had played with the same dogs before. The owner was crying over there. She told me that she sometimes she see the kid playing with the dog. Sometimes she told the kid, don't, don't jump over the fence. As this small street where homes are close enough to make every face familiar tries to come to terms with witnessing something they will never forget. I can imagine what the parents go through right now, you know. And then I pray for the neighborhood. 
Just a tough situation for everyone involved. Shortly after that attack, police tell us one of those dogs escaped the yard. They later caught up with it. That animal was euthanized. That second dog right now with animal control. We are live in Lowell this evening. Nicole Estefan, WCVB, New Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that report. Our thoughts and prayers are with the boys' family and friends and neighbors. Give me one minute, everyone. Sorry about that. Here we go. Man arrested after standoff at South Portland gas station. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. at Irving Oil gas stations? Now you can with Irving Rewards. With four ways to save, it adds up to big savings. Swipe at the pump. Swipe in the store. Pay with your Irving Rewards card. And purchase your home heating fuel from Irving Energy. Now that adds up to big savings with Irving Rewards. Pick up your Irving Rewards card at your nearest Irving Oil gas station and start saving up to 30 cents per gallon. Shaking. Nervous. Very nervous. Julie Skillings is a cashier here at the Irving gas station in South Portland. She says things got out of control on Sunday night. He's a regular. We didn't think anything of it. He did what he normally does and brought alcohol up to the counter. And I refused to sell it to him because he seemed intoxicated. Witnesses say Robert White was fumbling around and took it a step further. He came back up and tried to start taking stuff from behind the register, and I got mad. And I looked at Brittany, and I said, I'm going to go outside for a minute, because he's really getting on my nerves. Police say White was waving around a gun and then barricaded himself in the bathroom. Patrol officers maintained perimeter. Uh, we did that until uh, we had other assets arrive. A tactical team was called. After about an hour, White reportedly came out. He was arrested, taken to the county jail, and now faces criminal charges. A relief for Skillings and the other people who were inside. I've already called my family. They know we're all right. Okay, and there you go on that report. Sounds like scary moments during the ordeal. China's export to North Korea jumped 20.9% in the first three quarter of 2017. China's exports to North Korea jumped an annual 20.9% in the first three quarters of 2017, customer data showed. Southern California at crucial risk for wildfires aimed extreme heat and winds. Let's take a look. Parts of California will be in at in in enhanced risk of wildfires ignition this week aimed record-breaking heat in gusty winds, meteorologist said. And that does it for the Riley King newscast for the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.